Capricorn, courage leading to the power of redemption. Hello everyone, welcome to this month's virtue. Now this is quite a time to be grappling with this quality of courage and what it really means in our life. I'd like to start with a couple of lines from the Capricorn verse. May what is coming rest on what has been. May what has been surmise what is to come for a vigorous present existence. We need courage if we are to meet this vigorous present existence. It's so easy or The temptation is to avoid the life that's expressing itself. Often we want something other than what is brought into our world and into our experience. And yet it's this very engagement with what's present in your life that develops the capacity to meet the future. And what's present in your life has something to do with what was in the past. So the courage, and courage is such a powerful um, capacity on the path of inner development because we're called to have courage to meet the life that is presenting itself. We either want to dream away or sleep away, avoid what is there, to kind of put the blinkers on or put our head in the sand, or we spend our time trying to manifest something else than the life that we have been given, the life that presents itself. And this is really part of this great mystery of the journey of our experiences that there is something in them that leads us towards the next step. And only if we can meet the present time in its fullness are we given the capacities to go to meet the next step that's coming. Now, on one level, we recognize through the spiritual year that we get to re-meet the steps at a deeper and deeper level level and so it's not as though we have to hurry ourselves through any step and so there's this hermetic saying that says do not stop on any step no matter how high or it will become a snare but we could also easily say do not hurry by or dream through any step because what it gives us allows us to meet the future, meet what is coming towards us. Now there is this um, spoken by in many traditions and I'd like to give that picture through two of the Christian esotericists, the first from St John of the Cross in his poem Development. Once I said to God, how do you teach us? And he replied, If you were playing chess with someone who had infinite power and infinite knowledge and wanted to make you a master of the game, where would all the chess pieces be at every moment? Indeed, not only where he wanted them, but where all were best for your development, and that is every situation of one's life. It's not easy to allow that to to really be understood partly because we have this erroneous relationship to difficulty. Somehow we've come to understand life as if things are not going well or if they're difficult or if they're painful or if there's suffering, 
there is something wrong, and when things are easy, there is something right. We have found this relationship to the spiritual world, which feels more about the difficulties mean I'm being punished and the ease means I'm being re- rewarded, where in fact we recognize that through our development, we are being extended f- through the difficulties, but we're also being extended through the joys. We will be extended through engaging vigorously with the life that is presenting itself. And so it is said, a quiet life is for slumbering souls because when the spiritual world is really working us, it's usually extending us. It's not lullabying us in some anaesthetizing experience of existence, but it is invigorating us. And in knowing that, we can step into our lives differently. And St. Teresa of Avila speaks that out in her poem, Feeling Desperate. The earth and sky will open their purse for you and your life will change if with all your heart you say these words each day. Teach me, dear God, all that you know. One night I walked through the streets feeling desperate, in need of alchemy. A hooded priest passed by where there were no lamps. I could not see his face. I only heard the words he kept repeating. Teach me, dear Lord, all that you know. And I knew a treasure had entered my soul. These are words from those that have recognised this mystery of life and how it is not trying to take us down but develop us. And if we can say yes to being a student of that, we can live courageously with the events that are coming towards us. And that can, of course, mean different things for different people. You know, sometimes the courage to find solutions helps to extend our thinking or the courage to experience the fullness of our feelings the courage to meet the events that come towards us and not to sort of dismiss the world as though it's nothing to do with us. So what really touches us is something to do with us. And so building our relationship to courage is really a part of the path. And this leads us It doesn't say to redemption, but to the power of redemption. The power to to help transform what has been into what will be, to regain what is lost in a new way. So now we are finding our relationship to this. And it's not easy in a world where it feels like it's so difficult. But we also know from every step that we surmount on the path, we are gaining the capacity to meet the next step. And this is recognized with our inner development journey that if we can encounter what is there, and really fully meet the life that's in front of us, it gives us the strength, the capacities, the virtues that will allow us to meet what is coming from the future. But if I try to avoid what is in my life, try to ignore it or or deny it, then these capacities are the opportunity is missed. Now, with the cycle of the spiritual year, we can feel this opportunity comes back to us. And and at the same time, we also know that it's important for us through this experience of time and space to take the opportunities that present themselves. 
Now, we don't always see the struggles or the suffering as an opportunity. We don't always see the joy that we're having as an opportunity. But this is this ability to extend us so that we may live a vigorous, a vigorous life. And in that vigor for the life that is occurring, we might be prepared for what is to come. So it said esoterically, do not stop on any step, no matter how high, or it will become a st- snare. That we need to be in life, in the movement of what is unfolding. And at the same time, I would say don't hurry past any step or slumber through any step because you're given the fruits and the riches in the process that you're in right now, in the what is presenting to you in life right now. So it's with this sense of the courage to meet our lives, to meet ourselves, to meet the world that we engage with this month's virtue. And it's interesting at this time, it reminds me of this image, this biblical image of Mary being given the annunciation that she would be bearing the Christ being. And in a way, her response is, May whatever needs to come to me, come to me. It's not like, oh, well, that will be easy, or that's going to be a walk in the park. Oh, it's really, if this needs to come to me, let it come to me. This gesture of what we turn towards as we turn towards the new year, not to hide from what needs to come to us, not to avoid it, not to seek the slumbering life, but readying ourselves to prepare ourselves for the future means engaging with the present vigorously. So as we go into this month's practice, I'd like to start with one of the exercises that might help us towards this. Now this question came from one of the participants from the year-long course on inner development for world development from Educare and there'll be a link for those of you that would like to inquire into that. This is not a, in a way, beginning exercise, but it is a very useful inner process that gives us a kind of strength that can allow us to look upon ourselves in such a way that we face ourselves, not to look upon ourselves as a detachment, but to look upon ourselves to face ourselves. So let's begin with this first restfulness of soul exercise. Now this exercise won't be useful for everybody. And so if you feel you can't find a quality of rest in this exercise, you can choose one of the others that have been used throughout the whole month. Now to do this, you first of all need to have an ability to get a sense of the boundary of your body. So if you're sitting there, closed eyes, in the chair that you're in and you just feel the sense of the boundaries of your whole body as though you're able to have a point in each cell on the periphery and a point of consciousness of where your body is touching the chair, the position that you're in. And so you get a real inner experience of the boundaries of your body, which is not easy for everyone. But in starting from that place, you can then imagine yourself 
standing in front of yourself, looking towards this body that's sitting in the chair or lying in the position that you're in. And you're now able with your consciousness to look upon yourself, to face yourself. It's not with any judgment. It's not with any appraisal. It's just with that ability to remove yourself from being on the inside and to look from the outside towards your body where you are. Now for those of you that are used to meditating, you'll immediately find that quality of restfulness of soul that can come through this experience. For those of you that are not fully in the meditative experience yet, you could try one of the other restfulness of soul exercises. But you're looking back towards yourself And then, again, we follow the formula, I am, and focus on the point of the third eye. And in a way, in that point, we have this meeting of the one that can look upon myself and myself in this I am point. And then consciously, slowly, we, we follow towards the back of the head and down behind the spine. Courage. Capricorn. May what is coming Rest on what has been. May what has been surmise what is to come for a vigorous present existence. Through inward life withstanding, may world beings God grow strong. May life's working might blossom forth. May what has been endure what is to come. And then we drop that verse and just be with the inner activity. through 